someone offered you a career in television or a career in Stratford, which would you choose? I had the career in tele television, which lasted for a while. I mean, I did um, the Scottish play with Sean Connery before he became famous. Doing it again Shakespeare. But if someone offered you a, you know, a long-running sitcom or a long-running CSI Miami, we want you a Bill Needles. Robert, I've only auditioned three times in my life. The first audition was for You've John really and Judy, a radio show. three times show. in your life? Yes, yes. First what? Time. <laughs> Put this on tape. I don't know of any actor who's only auditioned three times. I'm sorry, what were they? The first time was for, i just come back from Winnipeg, had no work. My father said, go to J. Walter Thompson. They're our advertising agent. They might have something. I hear they've got something coming up. I went down. They were auditioning for this new soap opera called John and Judy. And I was one of 70 young men that auditioned. And I did it, went home. And they phoned the next day and said, you're it. And I thought, well, that's nice. I've got work for the next few weeks. It ran for 15 years. <laughs> I certainly had work. Oh, Same thing with Guthrie. When I auditioned for him, Dora Maver Moore got me to come in. What year? Um, that was... Uh, in the fall of 52, when he was out auditioning for the new. And where did you audition for him? In Dora's little office on Young at the corner of Bloor. Which and, corner of Young and Bloor? Well, it... <laughs> southwest corner. It was a very small office up on about the third floor. And do you remember what you did for Tyron Guthrie in 1952? Yes, I do, because I worked for Dora at that point. She said, you must come and audition for Satyra. He wasn't called Satyra in those days. Um, he's interested. I had done a lot of radio work, and she knew I had a good voice. And she would come into the office up the three flights of stairs. Oh, oh, oh my God, those stairs are going to be the death of me. <laughs> well, darling, how much is in the treasury today? the New Play Society, I'd open the box. Nothing but IOUs. <laughs> said, IOUs? Whose are those? I said, Dora, they're yours. <laughs> we were on <laughs> very shaky ground in those days. Anyway, she said, you come and audition for Tony. I came in, he was sitting in a small chair. He was six foot four. He was huge, sort of cramped there. And he looked at me over this little table and he said, Understand you're interested in being with us this summer? I said, yes, sir. You'll take $100 a week like the rest of us? I said, yes, sir. You'll learn your lines as do as you're told? I said, yes, sir. Very well, you're hired. <laughs> I said, don't you want to hear? No, I understand you're very good now. Get out. I've got a lot of other people to see. And I was hired, little did I know it, for the next 46 years. The third audition was in New York for um, um, Hadrian the Seventh. When I thought I didn't get it, and came out the stage door. Peter Dews was directing, and he couldn't stand me, and I couldn't stand him. So um, I said to Bill, Bill, Bill Friedman, who was the Canadian producer of it, I said, Bill. Uh, I don't think I got it. He said, oh, yes, you did. I said, what do you mean? He said, he cannot hire any more Englishmen. You've got the part. So I went to rehearsal. Peter Dews thought, again, I had an Iowan accent. Well, lad, you've got to get rid of that accent. I said, I've been doing quite well up in Canada. I've been playing for a while. Nevertheless, you have to get rid of it. And it was unpleasant. One day at lunch, I was with... <clears throat> Alec McCowan and Gilly Fennick were having lunch and I was not eating. And Alec looked at me and he said, Bill, you're not eating. I said, Alec, I'm not hungry. I think I'm going home. He said, back to your apartment? I said, no, to Toronto. I said, Peter Dews doesn't want me here. I'm going home. 
Alec laid down his fork and said, well, do you know something? I want you, and what I want makes a great deal of difference. <laughs> and I went back into rehearsal, and never another word was said to me by Peter Jews.